Okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. Looks like microphone is online. Looks like everything else is working pretty well. And if you're just joining us, we are working our way through Saturday or Sunday morning. And as of right now, things again, decently on the quiet side. So if you have any plans for outdoor activities, we've got tons of information uh, to talk to you about for right now. And also seeing again, little of anything taking place uh, in the way of major amounts of problems for the outdoors today. A little bit on the hot side out there. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Looks like we got everything working pretty well on Periscope and Twitter, so allow me just a second or two to switch over uh, joining our Facebook friends in just a second. If you've never been here before, this is our weather blog, exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime from WREG News Channel 3 in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It's just past 7.30 on Sunday morning, and we're looking again at some pretty hot conditions out across much of the Mid-South area into the course of the rest of the day today. So if you have any plans for outdoors. Go ahead and keep them, but please remember that we're going to be seeing again some pretty steamy conditions out there. Sunshine with a lot of clouds over the horizon at St. Francis in Cordova, just south of I-40 for this morning. And again, this is one of our weather bug cameras. You can get there by going to wreg.com slash webcams. Tons more cameras from around the country and around the rest of the world. Not much of anything going on this morning. We are seeing again some birds and some insects taking off right over the Mississippi River in downtown Memphis, all the way down into southwestern areas of Shelby County. And that's the, again, uh, insects, a little bit of moisture, and also some bird flocks in and around the area. We saw some decent amounts of bird rings taking off earlier this morning. And that, again, lent itself to what you can see with technology like this, very easily detectable with that amount of power out there. And again, so far, not seeing anything in the way of showers or thunderstorms just yet. But we could be looking for more opportunities for that throughout the course of the rest of the day. Taking a look at numbers back back into around the possibility. Again, oh, and also for these webcams, again, they're available at wreg.com slash webcams. More information about our forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. More information about radar, again, from a wide scale point of view, showing not much of anything going on directly into the Mid-South for this morning. A few areas of sprinkles and showers west of us over Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, but we'll be seeing more possibilities of thunderstorms into the course of the rest of the day. Thanks to everybody for joining joining us on Facebook for this morning. Let's go through the next 24 hours to the next 36 hours and show you that we do have more areas of showers and thunderstorms on the way, especially on Tuesday, right after the eclipse and into the rest of the week. We have a brand new cold front heading our direction, and this one is going to be stirring up a lot more in the way of showers or thunderstorms heading into the Mid-South as we go from Tuesday night into Wednesday. Could even be the possibility of some stronger, maybe even severe weather into parts of the area, so we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Hot and humid conditions again across the Mid-South. Uh, if you haven't heard just yet, the National Weather Service has issued a heat advisory for the counties shaded in orange. That does include Memphis and the metro area. The eastern Arkansas, northwest Mississippi, and Shelby County under a heat advisory, which means heat index temperatures, combining the temperature and the humidity to get that feels-like index. Could be, again, feeling about 105 degrees or higher than that for later on. So if you have any plans for outdoors, try to save them until after the heat advisory expires at about 7 o'clock tonight. After the sun has gone down, it's still going to be hot, but at least you're not going to have the sun beating down on you, and that may help a little bit. Now, toward Tuesday into Wednesday, again, we're already putting some markers for severe weather onto the forecast period. We'll keep our eyes on that throughout the course of the rest of the day. High temperatures today back into the lower to mid-90s, and again, some very warm conditions out there with stray chances of showers and thunderstorms into parts of the Mid-South, mainly across eastern Arkansas and northern Mississippi, some across southwest Tennessee. Not great chances, but again, still possible out there, so that's something to take a look at. Low temperatures into tonight. Not all that low, only going to be going back into around the lower to mid-70s at best, and that's going to be about it. Not much cooler than that, and chances of showers and thunderstorms will stick around for portions of the area, but not really seeing, again, huge amounts of activity possible into there. Let's go into tomorrow and take a look and see what's going on with the forecast as we head into Eclipse Day. Temperatures will be hot out there, so if the kids are heading outdoors, 
for around lunchtime and afterwards for the eclipse as things start to go to proceed. Uh, make certain everybody's hydrated. Make certain everybody's got plenty of water to drink. Take some breaks. Watch for signs of overheating. Even though the sun is going to be blocked by the moon, we still have to watch out for, again, a lot of the heat and humidity that's already going to be in place across much of the Mid-South. And chances for showers and thunderstorms will be greatest from roughly Jonesboro in northeast Arkansas back into around central Arkansas. Less of a chance of rainfall in the Mid-South as we go into tomorrow afternoon and evening, but here's the thing, it's still going to be possible. So after the eclipse, during the eclipse, there could be some showers and thunderstorms out there, which could be a bit of a problem. We'll keep our eyes on that and keep you updated. Todd Demers will be live here in the studio throughout the entire morning and keeping an eye on what's going on. Low temperatures tomorrow night after highs in the mid-90s back into the mid-70s. And as we get into Tuesday, high temperatures will be just as warm going back into around the lower to mid-90s out there. So not seeing much of an improvement. And chances of showers and thunderstorms really start to increase as that front starts to make its way down from the north and makes its way into the mid-south with lots more chances of rainfall out across much of the area. Again, taking a look at what's going on for the forecast for Monday from the weather underground, the forecast spreading things out quite nicely. And as we see again, by the time the eclipse begins to start, the temperatures may dip just a little bit as the moon blocks out the sunshine. So we may see the temperatures fall by just a little bit between there and the eclipse and then rise again right afterwards. But it looks like conditions are improving, mostly clear to partly cloudy skies. So good news for the eclipse viewers here in and around the Mid-South. We'll be keeping our eyes on that throughout the rest of the day, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest and, of course, into tomorrow morning with Daybreak. What's left of Harvey is basically falling apart but it could be back again. This storm system, as it makes its way into and around areas of the Southern Caribbean, the Bay of Campeche, which is notorious for redeveloping and creating these uh, huge storms in the atmosphere, the hurricanes and tropical storms, this stands a 60% chance of redeveloping before it smacks into Central America. We also have another storm system, 20% chance, and this one could make its way up a little bit closer to around Florida. So if you're heading to the Bahamas, uh, Key West, West, Miami, anything like that in the next few days, or the East Coast in general. This is something else you want to keep an eye on just to be on the safe side on that. And again, another storm system way on off into the Atlantic. This one standing about a uh, not too much, looks like if I can get the forecast information on there, uh, not much specifically, about a 10% chance early on, and it looks like not much more than that. Uh, through the rest of the period. So that doesn't look to be too much of a threat, but this one over portions of the Atlantic just north of Puerto Rico, that could be something to take a look at. So please keep that in mind if you are going to be traveling to the East Coast anytime soon. Tons of information, again, available on my Facebook page about the eclipse, about your forecast, about all kinds of stuff involving science and general geekery. And uh, hey, cool, you can see me live right there. That's me watching me watching me. Haven't seen that in quite some time. Also, pictures from around the Mid-South. We'd love to see your pictures. Tweet them to me at aonic underscore WREG3. That's my Twitter handle. And again, you can get more information by going directly to my Facebook page and Twitter pages for more on that and follow along for more information there. Also, don't forget tons of information on the eclipse, especially the eclipse video where I cut this at the Memphis Pink Palace Museum explaining about the moon and the sun and the effect it's going to have and how you need to be careful. Now coming up in daybreak in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to be explaining more about why it's important to have the right eye care and make certain you have the right equipment for this. Also, don't be so engaged in the eclipse that you're trying to get the right picture and document it and everything else. Take the time to do your best to just make certain that you enjoy this. And by all means, and especially, please make certain that you are helping the younger kids understand what they are seeing and engage them with this. Give them an opportunity to both watch the eclipse safely with pinhole projectors, like we have on my video here, which is available again at wrag.com slash weather. Or again, make certain that they know exactly what's happening with the physics of all this. Kids are going to have questions, and if you don't know the answer to something, it's okay to say, I don't know. But here's the cool thing. You can also say to the kids, I don't know, 
but let's find out together. That's what science is all about, and that's how we can make this world a better place by asking questions and getting curious and engaging people uh, with what is going on with the cool stuff out there, including just using two pieces of paper, one with a hole in it to project the eclipse through. That's cool. That's absolutely incredible to do. That's science in a nutshell. Plus, you'll be keeping the kids looking away from the sun just to be on the safe side. So please keep that in mind and stay tuned for more. more more on the forecast, especially the seven-day available at WRAG.com slash weather, and my forecast on the air throughout the course of the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. i got to get back out on set because we got a lot more going on to finish up Daybreak Sunday, so stay tuned for more with myself and co-anchor Nina Harrelson, and we'll have more coming up throughout the rest of the day on the Eclipse forecast and beyond for a pretty hot week coming up on News Channel 3. Thanks for joining me this morning for our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime.